Attention ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids across the galaxy, this is your Grand Admiral Arnold calling straight from the deadliest star destroyer this galaxy has ever seen. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the best free to play characters in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Non raid reward, non legendary, non journey, non epic confrontation, and non hard node characters. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of amazing free to play characters that get you an amazing bang for your buck that are very easy to farm. So let's go ahead and get right into it. It. This isn't going to be part of my list for the top 15, but I just want to put it out there. The Phoenix characters. If you are a new player, these guys are all free to play accessible and they compose the very first team you should be shooting for in Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. They are your beginning journey to unlocking a lot of key legendary characters. I just want to put it out there. If you're someone trying to find where's the best place to start, this is where you kind of want to start. Asajj Ventress, one of the most easily accessible characters in this game. I love how the game jumps me to the packs. You don't need to open up packs to get Asajj Ventress. She is very accessible inside of the squad arena store she's got a separatist tag granted no separatist kit really in here but you could throw her in a separatist lineup we're gonna get a couple separatists in this list today but mainly the night sister tag she is fantastic with the night sisters especially important for pretty much all of the raids we have in this game if you wanted to you can use her leadership ability if you're still tackling the rancor raid if you have a zeta give it to asajj ventress and all of a sudden you got a turn meter removal heavy team which is very important for the rancor raid she's got a stun in her basic which is great mass buff the spell that can also remove turn meter which is very very deadly and shuts down a lot of teams that are very turn meter reliant it's also important to point out this character will be needed for the general anakin skywalker epic confrontation but that's really way down the line if you're a beginner player but it's good to know that you're farming and you're gearing up and you're potentially going to zeta up a character that's going to be important for big events down the road old ben very easily accessible in the cantina nodes you can get him at pretty very early battle 2f and aside from that this is the key thing right here he can shut down a lot of those especially beginner random teams you come across that don't have uh, good cleansing abilities just yet being able to remove turn meter apply ability block he taunts and the cool thing is it's one of the longer taunts in this game it's a two turn taunt and uh, the other thing that's really neat when old ben gets defeated he's gonna grant a ton of stuff to the whole entire team so you kind of want old ben to die first so he grants offense up speed up and then they people can recover health and protection and let's not forget he's also a jedi which is great for the yoda event and he also can be used for the commander luke skywalker journey event count dooku again easily accessible besides the hard nodes you can also farm this guy in the cantina table but what makes him all around viable really two like two or three things right here force lightning being able to stun because he just stuns 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 and he spreads shock like wildfire and as you guys may know shock prevents turn meter and buffs and stun you're gonna miss a turn if you have stun and then his basic can ability block can also stun so having stuns and control over over the enemy is one of the uh, most important attributes a character can have he will used to be the number one most annoying character in the game because he would constantly counter attack and counter attack and counter attack a hundred percent chance of dealing extra damage if he has to counter attack and he's going to gain turn meter and he's already one of the fastest characters in this game his base speed makes him uh, like top five fastest characters in this game barris offy next on this list here this is one of those do as i say not as i do type of things unfortunately i did not never got around to the key zeta for Barris, which is the fact that she just constantly heals when allies are being critically hit one of the best cornerstone zetas that still has stuck around uh until this day and this is a very old zeta she ignores shock and she ignores healing immunity with her healing equalization capabilities and you cannot go wrong with that she's also very helpful for the yoda event but it's just nice to know that having a healer which is important as a beginner player this character helps ignore a lot of those things you see early on like with darth sidious and count dooku and palpatine healing equalization comes in handy quite a lot let's talk about my man bob boba fett right here uh i would say basically uh, just as a heads up i think this character is almost mandatory for the Chewbacca Legendary event. If you guys saw my Chewbacca Legendary video, this is the guy that helped me bring in no Zeta, low gear, low speed characters into the Chew event. He basically carried the whole event by himself. Beyond that, Bounty Hunters, core faction in this game. They're great for the Sith raid. They're helpful to get the, the credit highs taken care of. He's got a good ship as well. He's accessible in the Cantina Battle Store, and he puts out great damage. He's got massive ability block capabilities. He's got this, which is very similar to Darth Vader's Colony 
Dazzling Blade, where the more buffs and debuffs and, and, and the enemy team, the more damage this guy can do. Great catch-all leadership, which is also great for the bounty hunters as well. We talked about Barris and how the healing is very helpful. Well, old Daka, she heals, has a pretty big healing capability with Chant of Resurrection. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Unfortunately, my Night Scissors, I can never get around to them. Always stuck with other side projects going on. She heals based off her max health, and she has one of the highest max healths in this game for the most part. And she can revive a random Night Scissor ally, guaranteed, so you can basically revive Asajj Ventures like we talked about earlier. And she can revive a second character as well. And, and of course, you want to use Old Doc with Night Scissors because she's just a revive maniac, and she can just constantly heal up these Night Scissors stuns on the basic. There was a time when you would combine Old Dooku, or Count Dooku, with Royal Guard and Old Doc, and it just turns into a stun frenzy going on. So if you're trying to find like some stun heavy teams, throw her with characters like Count Duke, and that'll really annoy a lot of your opponents potentially. She's in the Cantina store as well. Very accessible. Now, Ahsoka Tano on point was a pretty uh, garbage character. She actually got a minor rework way back when. Still wasn't that good, but now with her pretty solid rework that they gave her early on this year with Jedi Anakin as well as General Kenobi, she is a fairly good Jedi to use. This is a Jedi I would recommend you guys get if you're trying to get the things like uh, Grandmaster Yoda. These are characters to farm. You can get her in the Cantina Battle Store. You can also get her in the Fleet Store. I wouldn't recommend using your Fleet Currency for Ahsoka Tano. And she's got three amazing tags. Jedi, Galactic Republic, and the 501st. She's needed to get General Anakin Skywalker as well. There's no way around it. And as I said, you can use her for the Grandmaster uh, Yoda event. Her basic has a buff this spell, which is huge. And especially if you pair her up with Galactic Republic allies, she's constantly going to be able to assist. She has a healing capability, and this ability gets more powerful if there's a Galactic Republic uh, leader in the slot, if there's General Kenobi and Jedi Anik, which are key characters you kind of want her to be with anyways. And she has a ship as well. Again, trying to um, knock out multiple things. Good kit, good general viability, important for a lot of big teams in this game, used for legendaries and epic confrontation events. Again, the, if you can get this character early, you're setting yourself up for a lot of fun teams in the future. Fives, this character was very, very annoying at one point. Again, Cantina Battle Store. There's some hard notes. Stuff, and I got tons of shards out of the bronze, uh, bronze impact. So a lot of ways to get five. He's got a ship. The ship is very important in the game. It's a very solid ship, especially when you pair it up with Galactic Republic ships. And they finally made fives a taunting character, something we've been wanting for ages. And luckily, the rework that just happened a couple months ago gave him the taunt we've been looking for. He's one of the more higher damage dealing tanks we have in this game as well. So extremely annoying. And if you're trying to compose some fun teams, you can definitely do so. And if you remember his unique ability, a lot of 501st clone trooper synergy, and there's a lot of other free to play clones. You can throw with him to maximize his tactical awareness unique ability, as well as Domino Squad. Jedi Knight Anakin. Now, I will admit, this is going to be one of the more challenging characters to farm. Nowhere near as hard node characters, raid, legendaries, still a character that you can access quite easily. He is a very good all around uh, viability character. Heck, he works with Night Scissors, mainly because this Righteous Fury ability opens up so much potential yes they did nerf it a little bit by containing the extra 100 percent more damage only if there's a full team of galactic republic but still anytime any ally falls below 50 percent health whether well, separatists galactic republic sith jedi uh ewoks for goodness sakes this is gonna trigger and it's gonna make anakin keep taking a ton of bonus turns he still puts out massive amounts of damage and again he is needed for things like the G general anakin skywalker legendary event and because he has one of the best ships it's fantastic for mace windu's ship uh general kenobi's ship just in general a great ship for no matter what line if you put him in he's got the jedi tags you can use him for the things like the grandmaster yoda event you got so many options here this character is easily one of the best characters we have in this game overall right now statement hk47 is a madman this guy is probably the ultimate jedi killer in this game he puts out bonkers amounts of damage he's got the droid tag and droids are having a lot of fun right now in the game he has a sith empire tag he makes darth revan super deadly lots of anti-jedi stuff going on there but besides that he inflicts tenacity down which is a huge ability needed especially for things like the territory battles and just in general countering high tenacity teams and just big damage everywhere that you go to i mean this right here is basically the terminator he can literally one shot a lot of characters out of the water and obviously the biggest highlight for this character is that he will be needed for the darth revenue event and of course the darth malik event and the, the great thing about it is he's very excited Successful squad arena story. You can't go wrong 
farming this character early and because of his general all-around viability as a beginner player if you're let's say you're not chasing after phoenix you can throw him in some places like boba fett lead with uh, with the uh, hk 47 have fun with all the juicy damage you're going to be seeing flying across the map with something like that now this is going to be the last more difficult character to farm uh again not as difficult as all, all the other stuff in the game right now but cantina battle 8d so kind of like Je uh, jedi Knight anakin uh farming viability it's something a bit more difficult but i'm saying that very lightly it's still a very free to play friendly character frankly the most free to play friendly character we've gotten in this game as of recently in quite a long time although he's mainly met for geonosians because of the separatist tag and just in general how this guy's kit operates it's actually an all-around viability character and it really comes with the two for one special you farm one character well guess what you're going to be getting two characters that comes along with this guy because you're going to be getting also the geonosian brute which is basically a taunting character so you're going to get a good support character that can cleanse dispel boss and also bring in a taunt you see this character be used for a lot of things heck you also see this guy be used in darth revan and darth malik teams plus it's helpful for the padme amidala event so <laughs> there's just so many great things about this character man all right so we got four more characters on this list let's try to get through them quickly a couple separatists left on this list actually b2 super battle droid uh this guy screams use me in any type of lineup and i will rain hellfire onto your opponents easily accessible 12 energy node cantina battles and really it comes down to these three abilities right here mow down relentless barrage and reactive protocol open up the doors for a lot of fun things this is the key thing right here that opens up all around viability b2 has a 40 percent chance to gain 100 percent turn meter 100 percent so he can go whoop right away and take a turn right away he could be the slowest character on the field yet take the most amount of turns if you think about that it's kind of crazy and every time he's taking a turn he's going to quickly keep coming around to mow down and this is one of the best all around buff dispel capabilities in the game because this spells all positive stats effects and also applies buff immunity as well stopping tanks and things like grandmaster yuda from trying to get their buffs around plus you're gonna need him uh, most likely for the padme event you have a lot of options for the padme event but he makes it extremely easy to knock out the padme event and you're gonna need this character as well for the general anakin skywalker event too last separatist on this list this is one of the most clever reworks i've ever seen in a character it's nothing extremely overpowered but because of his kit and how it fools the opponent's uh, ai and how they operate it's a fantastic character new gun rate very easily accessible in the squad arena store this is the character if you're trying to knock out the padme legendary event with minimum requirements put him as the lead he doesn't even have any zetas on his leadership ability it really just comes down to how powerful extortion is there's about six or seven layers of benefits that extortion gives you it would suck up the whole video if i explained it again there's videos i've made in the past explaining it so mainly because of how extortion works and how the opposing teams have a hard time dealing with it this is one of the most clever all-around characters you can possibly use and it forms a variety of scoundrel teams separatist teams i mean you can just find so many things to do because of these two tags right here this character right here is honestly probably the best bang for your buck uh, node in this game it's in the cantina battle it has kylo ren shards and it has the kylo ren ship which uh those are two fantastic things that's one of the best ships we actually have in the game right now he's got a buff the spell he's got a massive two turn stun and he's also got a good general uh tank viability if you don't want to use him in a first order team he's got a pre-taunt pre-taunts are a fantastic mechanism and, uh, and frankly a lot of beginner teams have a hard time dealing with pre-taunts like this and he is the first order leader to use in this game first order is probably a c c plus b minus team uh at best here but they're going to increase in viability and already he's needed for the uh, for the bb8 event which is important to get jedi training re again a lot of resistance stuff probably important for rise of skywalker soon now very last on the list captain rex there was no particular order for everything uh, up until this point but this is the best all around beginner free to play character you can possibly get in star wars galaxy of heroes and he got a rework and even beforehand he was already one of the best uh free to play characters in this game but he got a rework and he is now for sure the best character for free to play beginner players to access in the game now i will admit his farming is going to be probably a little bit more challenging because he kind of randomly appears in the guild store he is available in the fleet store but really there should be one more slot showing that he's available in the guild store and that's most likely where you're going to want to farm this character he has a massive cleanse ability that also on top of cleansing grants a ton of turn meter to your team especially for the more debuffs you dispel the more turn meter that's granted to your team and on top of it, you're going to get tenacity up so you prevent further 
debuffs from being applied to your team he removes termiter on the basic decent catch-all leadership ability he increases max health of his uh, allies and then he grants a ton of termiter to your team anytime they are being critically hit so that right there makes him one of the best catch-all leaders we have in this game he has an annihilate capability so if you pair him up with a lot of clone trooper allies the more clone troopers taking turns the more damage this guy is going to do so he can just one shot characters out of the water and do millions of damage in raids this is the best free to play character uh, all around viability character in this game at this point and he's got a ship too so hopefully this video was helpful for all you people who might be just starting off in the game or people trying to find something to spice up their fun a bit or just understanding what characters are kind of um, have amazing viability because right now in the game all the best things for the most part are very end game and very whale heavy these characters right here very free to play beginner friendly and you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck thank you guys so much for watching like if you did enjoy the video comment down below on your thoughts or other characters you think people should be looking at that are very easily accessible and be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing and i'll talk to all the other people in the next video peace out everyone